Hi, Dr. Gary Frenette here. And as you uh, recall, you've already seen, I believe, the first chemotherapy video which we would recommend, and that's a general chemotherapy video. In that video, we talk about some of the commonalities that all treatments share and how you can anticipate and react to some of the potential issues you might face. However, as we mentioned, there's about 75 different medicines that we call chemotherapy. And we now wanted to produce a video speaking to you about the specific medications you'll be taking. In this video, we're going to discuss several issues with regard to that treatment. How, does those, how do those drugs work? How are those treatments administered? What is the schedule of treatments? And uh, we'll go into some of the potential reactions you could have to that treatment and how you can adjust to them. As always, whenever you have any questions, you should call your healthcare team if there's ever an issue. But by watching these videos, you may be better able to anticipate and prepare for some of the rare side effects that can happen. So as you can see here, we're actually within a chemotherapy a treatment room. And we have chemotherapy uh, chairs where you can sit and even lie back. There's TVs and internet access so that you can be entertained. And we'll also allow you to have a family member with you or a friend with you during your treatment. The specific number of treatments and the regulations such as how old they need to be uh, will be discussed with you with your healthcare team during your chemotherapy teaching session. These videos, for example, are meant to supplement but not to replace that specific interaction you're going to have with us prior to your treatment. So you'll be able to get all your questions answered. During this video, what we'd recommend, as with the first video, is that you write down any questions you might have about your treatment. And then we can discuss those specifically when you come for your appointment to make your appointment more productive and to make sure all your questions have been appropriately addressed. There are some issues that you might imagine come about when you're getting chemotherapy treatment that I just like to uh, discuss briefly. And as you can tell, we're in a large chemotherapy treatment room. That's done on purpose so that the nurses can have visual access to you during your treatment. If there are any unfortunate reactions or uh, problems that you're having, we can recognize those immediately. Because it is an open space though, we usually ask that patients refrain from wearing heavy perfumes or colognes. Although you may not be bothered by them, other people may be more sensitive to smells during that treatment and uh, therefore would appreciate you wearing as little perfume or cologne as possible. Likewise, oftentimes patients will bring snacks or food into the chemotherapy treatment room, which is completely reasonable and appropriate but we'd ask that they not be especially strong smelling because once again, some people can de uh, develop an aversion to strongly smelling food uh, during their treatment. And so as a courtesy to others, we would ask that you uh, try to uh, respect that during your treatment. In addition, uh, in, a, uh, in addition to the TV, for example, or uh, computers, a lot of times people like to listen to music or other uh, audible uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, because other people may be trying to rest, it's always a nice idea to bring headphones or something like that into your treatment room so you can enjoy the music or the TV at the volume you like without having to worry about disturbing others. The next portion of the video is going to be a slide presentation of your specific chemotherapy treatment. Make sure you uh, have a notepad with you and jot down any notes or questions you might have or that the slide presentation generates so that we can answer them during your in-person visit with us afterwards. This video represents the views of Dr. Gary Frenette and not any clinic or hospital system. It's designed to supplement, but not replace, the written and verbal information provided to you during your teaching sessions. It reviews common, trivial side effects as well as rare but life-threatening complications of therapy. Today we're going to talk about the use of RCHOP chemotherapy, which is comprised of five drugs, Rituxan, Cytoxin, Adriamycin, Vincristin, and Prednisone chemotherapy. To understand your treatment better, it's going to be necessary to have a brief refresher course on biology. 
Don't worry, we're going to keep it simple. Remember, all living things are made of cells. And the blueprint for how a cell and our bodies are made is encoded in a molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Here's a brief video showing this process. So cancerous cells are characterized by uncontrolled cell division. Both normal and cancerous cells divide by going through something called the cell cycle. And the cell cycle goes from a resting phase through active growing phases and then to mitosis or cell division. The ability of chemotherapy to kill cancer cells depends on its ability to halt cell division. When the cancer cells are unable to divide, they die. Chemotherapy kills cancer cells more effectively than normal cells since the cancer cells divide faster and don't have time to repair themselves prior to cell division. Let's show a brief video now on the cell cycle. So the scheduling of chemotherapy, therefore, is based on several factors. The type of cancer, the rate at which the cancer divides, and the time at which a given chemotherapy drug is likely to be effective within the cell cycle. And that is why chemotherapy is typically given in cycles. Cycles are simply treatments which are separated by time intervals. During that time interval, the cancer cells die while the normal cells have time to heal. When the healing of the normal cells is not complete, side effects occur. The normal cells most commonly affected by chemotherapy include blood cells, the lining of the stomach and the colon, and hair follicles. This accounts for some of the common side effects of chemotherapy including low blood counts, mouth sores, 
nausea, and hair loss. Rituxan or rituximab is actually a monoclonal antibody and it's designed to target or inactivate a specific protein on lymphoma cells which is called CD20. Rituxan locks onto that target, CD20, and inactivates the protein, thereby promoting death of the lymphoma cell. Rituxan also helps your immune system recognize the cancer cell as foreign and attack it. Here's a brief video showing the CD20 molecule on the surface of the cell and it's sending its signal to the cell nucleus to divide. Rituxan once again blocks this protein. This schematic shows the CD20 protein on the surface of the lymphoma cell. The C protein is activated and sends a message to the cell nucleus to divide. This is the process that's inhibited by the antibody rituxan and this message is therefore not sent. Cyclophosphamide, or cytoxin, is an alkylating agent that works by cross-linking DNA and not allowing it to duplicate. If the cancer cell cannot duplicate its DNA, it dies. Normal cells have higher amounts of an enzyme that renders the drug inactive and are therefore less affected by the drug and able to repair any DNA damage that's done. Adriamycin, or doxorubicin, inserts itself between the DNA strands of the of the double helix, thereby disrupting that double helix structure. Adriamycin also inhibits an enzyme called topoisomerase 2, which is important in DNA replication. Inhibition of DNA replication in rapidly dividing or cancer cells leads to cell death. Vincristin belongs to a group of drugs called plant alkaloids, and these are also known as antimicrotubule agents or spindle fiber inhibitors. And these spindle fiber inhibitors, such as vincristin, inhibit the microtubule structures within the cell. And spindle fibers are part of the cell's apparatus for dividing and replicating itself. Once again, spindle fibers help separate duplicated DNA into each dividing cell. Vincristin, by inhibiting this process, kills the dividing cancer cell. Here's a brief video showing spindle fibers in action. Prednisone belongs to a group of drugs called glucocorticoids, which are actually made in the adrenal glands of your body. It's a highly active drug in lymphoma, but is usually used with chemotherapy. Prednisone is a drug taken by mouth, which promotes lymphoma cell death by initiating a suicide program within the cancer cell. Let's now look at the schedule of RCHOP chemotherapy. All the drugs, except for prednisone, are given by vein, otherwise known as intravenously or IV, every 21 days. The total number of treatments varies based on the extent of disease and the response to treatment. Prednisone is given orally, that is by mouth, for the first five days of each treatment or cycle. Antinausea medications are given by vein prior to administration of RCHOP. The RCHOP regimen takes about six to eight hours to administer since the rituxan must be given slowly. Growth factors such as Neupogen or Neulasta may be given under the skin subcutaneously to help your white cells or immune system recover more quickly. 
Here's a graph uh, representation of the RCHOP chemotherapy regimen. As we mentioned, the drugs are given uh, on, day, uh, on the first day or day zero by vein. The prednisone is given five days by mouth. Nulasta may be given the day after the intravenous infusion to help your blood cells recover, or Nupagen, a shorter acting drug, may be given several days after the administration of chemotherapy. The entire regimen or cycle lasts 21 days, and that cycle is generally repeated for a variable number of, of times. RCHOP chemotherapy can be associated with reactions that occur during the actual treatment or an infusion reaction. These are relatively common with the first dose of rituxan, but decrease in frequency with subsequent treatments. The reaction can include flushing, shortness of breath, palpitations, or lightheadedness. Most reactions are very mild, but very rarely can be serious or life-threatening. For this reason, you'll be closely watched during the initial portion of your treatment. Once again, some reaction to rituxan is very, very common, especially with the first treatment, so don't be alarmed. Infusion reactions are, are reduced by the prednisone you take, as well as other drugs such as antihistamines, which will be administered during your treatment. Let's now talk about the side effects of our CHOP chemotherapy, things that you might notice after your treatment has been completed. The most important thing to remember is that each person's reaction to chemotherapy is different. Some people have very few side effects, while others may experience more. The side effects described here won't affect everyone who has RCHOP chemotherapy. Some things you might notice are heartburn, and this can often feel like a pit in the stomach or even nausea. If you recognize this, let us know because we can give you medications that block acid secretion into the stomach and help with this feeling. Constipation or diarrhea can occur. Constipation is more common with this regimen and can be treated with medications such as Miralax as well as foods. Adriamycin can very rarely cause decreases in heart function or the pumping of the heart. Your heart function will be measured prior to starting therapy to ensure your risk is minimal. Muscle pain or headaches can occur with Nulasta. These are usually treated with pain medications over the counter. Very rarely they may need stronger medications. Bladder irritation can occur with Cytoxin, but usually at higher doses than those given in this treatment. Good fluid intake after chemotherapy should help avoid this. Hair loss will occur about two to three weeks after the first treatment. Loss of hair on the head occurs first, but eyebrows, eyelashes, or pubic hair even can be lost as treatment proceeds. Your hair will grow back at a normal rate after treatment, but at first may have a different color or texture. The cost of your wig may be covered by insurance. Prednisone can also cause fluid retention, weight gain, mood swings, or insomnia. If you notice those issues, inform your health care team. Mouth sores, as well as nasal tenderness, can occur and can be minimized with mouth rinses and non-alcoholic mouthwashes. Blood counts, especially white counts that help you fight infection, are reduced with this regimen. This usually occurs five to seven days after the treatment's given. You should report any fever greater than 100.5 or shaking chill to your health care team. You'll be given shots to help promote recovery of your immune system in many instances. Nausea can occur with this regimen and occurs somewhere between 6 and 48 hours after treatment. You'll be given anti-nausea medications before your treatment by vein and by mouth as needed thereafter. RCHOP chemotherapy can also affect fertility. Talk to your healthcare team if this is an issue for you. During chemotherapy, you should practice adequate contraception. Numbness of the hands and feet can occur, usually to the use of vincristin. This is known as peripheral neuropathy. You may also notice that you have difficulty with fine motor movements, such as buttoning shirts or putting in earrings. It's important to report these symptoms to your doctor as they may be controlled by slightly lowering the dose of the drug. These side effects usually improve slowly over a few months after the treatment's finished. Lastly, doxorubicin is red, and as a result, your urine may turn a pink-red color for up to 48 hours after treatment. This is completely normal and harmless. As we mentioned, you're going to be receiving intravenous anti-nausea medications prior to your chemotherapy. 
In addition, we're going to provide you with prescriptions for medications you can take by mouth to combat nausea after your treatment. If you experience nausea when you get home, take these medications immediately. Don't hope or wish for it to just simply pass on its own. Since these medications can cause constipation, you may need Miralax or another mild laxative. Some of the medications we may provide for you include Zofran or Ondansetron. You should take one 8 mg tablet every 8 hours as needed for nausea. This medication doesn't cause nausea, uh, sleepiness, so it can be a good medication to take during the day when you want to be alert. Phenergan or Promethazine is taken one tablet every 6 hours as needed for nausea. This medication can cause variable amounts of nausea, so please be aware of this. Ativan or lorazepam is taken once every six hours and almost always causes no, uh, sleepiness. For that reason, you may want to take it at night uh, to help you sleep. Let's go over some frequently asked questions with regard to RCHOP chemotherapy. Can I drive to my chemotherapy appointments? Well, we like you to have a driver for your first treatment, and if you receive drugs such as antihistamines that cause sedation, you may also need a driver for subsequent treatments. Will I gain weight with steroids, such as prednisone? Well, these drugs can cause fluid retention and increased appetite in some patients. Be aware of your food intake, as well as the quality of the food you're eating. For example, avoid excessive desserts, salts, or simple carbohydrates. Can I get manicures, pedicures, or massage? Manicures and pedicures are usually avoided during aggressive chemotherapy. If you're receiving chemotherapy chronically, it may be possible to have manicures and pedicures, but even then you'll probably want to bring your own tools and avoid cutting cuticles. Avoid skin scrubs if you have any skin sensitivity on the palms or soles. Massage therapy, on the other hand, is usually very helpful during treatment, but avoid any deep muscle massage if your platelets are low. Remember, platelets are the cells that help your blood clot. Are there any food restrictions? Well, avoid uncooked fish, meat, or eggs. There are no restrictions regarding fresh fruit and vegetables. Simply wash them as you normally would before eating them. You may find you prefer cooler, lighter foods and meals during treatment. Smoothies, for example, with protein supplements can also be a healthy, attractive food choice as can Greek yogurts. Can I exercise during chemotherapy? Absolutely, and we strongly recommend that you do so in order to maintain your strength and endurance during treatment. You should pace yourself, especially on your slow days, and stop when you become fatigued. Should I change my diet to avoid cancer in the future? We'll discuss dietary changes, but you may find only certain foods appeal to you during treatment or that your sense of taste has changed. Start slowly with any dietary changes and focus on healthy, non-processed foods. That's always a good start. Should I take anti-nausea medications at home after my treatment? Well, this is often necessary or recommended as we've discussed and therefore we'll discuss this with you even more during your visits with us. Can I take my regular medications? Absolutely, unless you're informed otherwise, continue your current medications as prescribed by your physicians. Should I take vitamins or supplements? There can be significant interactions between supplements and vitamins and chemotherapy drugs. Please assemble therefore a list of all the vitamins and supplements you're taking. In general, we really prefer that these be stopped until after your chemotherapy is complete to avoid any unanticipated side effects or drug interactions. These can usually be resumed after therapy is completed. Do I need a port or intravascular access device? Well, although we can often treat intravenously by simply inserting an IV catheter in the arm, there are times when ports are required due to poor or limited venous access, continuous infusions of drugs, or when the drugs are irritating to the veins. We're going to show a brief video at the end of all of this uh, video to provide a summary uh, for ports for chemotherapy administration. So in summary, RCHOP chemotherapy is effective medication because there's a therapeutic window. In other words, the drugs are specifically designed to be toxic to the cancer cells while your normal cells have the ability to recover from the treatment. The chemotherapy treatment and supportive medications, such as antinausea drugs and shots that help your immune system, are delivered at specific times during each treatment or cycle. The side effects from chemotherapy are generally mild, self-limited, and managed with medications or behavioral changes. Severe side effects are very rare. 
Most importantly, if you have any questions or concerns regarding your therapy or the symptoms you're experiencing, call your healthcare team. That is really why we're here. Well, I want to thank you for watching the second video today, and I hope you've written down all your questions so that we can address them during a personal visit uh, with your healthcare team, what we call a chemotherapy teaching session prior to your therapy. That way, I'm very confident that you're going to be comfortable with your treatment and be able, be able to anticipate any issues that arise. As always, however, if something unexpected happens, I want you to feel very free to call us at any time for any reason so that we can address any concerns you might have. My friend and colleague, Dr. Eric Wang, is now going to briefly discuss the use of venous access devices, or porticasts as we sometimes call them, in the use of chemotherapy. Not everyone who receives chemotherapy needs a porticast, but for example, those patients with poor access to veins in their arm, or patients who require continuous infusions of chemotherapy over one to two days, will be benefited by the use of these ports. With these ports, you can swim, you can shower, and perform other activities as he'll now discuss for you. So move ahead to the next section of the video if you think you may uh, want to learn more about these devices, or if you believe you're a candidate for these. Welcome, I'm Dr. Eric Wang, interventional radiologist with the vascular and interventional specialists of Charlotte Radiology. Your healthcare provider has ordered a port placement for you. I'm here to review this procedure and to make you and your family members feel at ease. A port is a small device used to obtain safe and reliable access to administer IV medications, such as chemotherapy drugs or antibiotics, and also used to obtain blood samples. Port is a small device, as I mentioned, and is about the width of a quarter and less than half an inch thick. The port is implanted underneath the skin surface at the chest, a few centimeters below the collarbone, and this tubing is then inserted into a neck vein. Most patients are relieved after they have had their port placed that they no longer have to be stuck multiple times in their arms to get IV access. The port, once healed, is relatively unnoticeable and requires very little care. Patients resume their normal daily activities. This can include taking baths, exercise, and even swimming without worrying about the port. During your port placement, you will be taken to an interventional radiology suite where sophisticated x-ray equipment will be used for safe placement of your port. A technologist will then use special soap to wash the upper chest and neck, and then a sterile drape will be placed over the skin surface in order to provide a sterile environment to decrease the risk of infection. Once you are prepped, the nurse will give you sedation through an IV, and I will give you local numbing medication at the skin access site. A small pocket is created at the upper chest level, and then a catheter is placed under lifetime x-ray guidance into a neck vein. Once the port is placed, the pocket will be closed in a couple layers of absorbable suture, which will heal on its own. You will then go to the nursing recovery area and rest for about an hour prior to going home. Thank you for allowing Charlotte Radiology to be your healthcare provider. Please do not hesitate to ask additional questions during your visit.